Let's play the 15 levels of the chapter 1 to have some first impressions on Hitman Go, a puzzle game published by Square Enix. So Hitman Go is a turn-based puzzle game with beautifully rendered diorama style set pieces. It's not however a board game to the point of being static or simplistic. It's turn-based, so first you go and then all the enemies. Let's start with the first level. You will strategically navigate fixed spaces on a grid, kind of a secret, to avoid enemies and take out your target or infiltrate well-guarded locations. So, here the first levels are obviously very easy, there are no enemies, they are essentially designed to uh, get you uh, used to, uh, to play the game, to the control. You really have to think about each move and all the hitman tools of the trade you would expect are included in this game. Disguises, uh, distractions, sniper rifles and even Agent 47's iconic silver bowlers. So at first glance, Hitman Go might seem like um, a strange version of the adventures of the cold killer named Agent 47. We are used to the Hitman games presenting us with a person perspective and placing us in environments that are full of deadly tools and here they are, they are, there's no blood actually. So Hitman Go is a very different game to play but thematically well it's not so far from its predecessors. It's still a game about being an assassin. This time however you, your adventures take the form of uh, something similar to a sliding block puzzle so it works like this. Each hit is made of a series of little vignettes and each of these vignettes presents you with a secret grid across which you slide your Agent 47 piece. Note by note. While everything else on the grid acts according to whatever simple and usually specific rule that it obeys. So, guards in blue as you can see here in this map, remain still, watching the note before them, so you don't slide over this note. You can distract those guards, as you can see, by throwing uh, stones, and then they turn around 180 degrees, and you can attack them from behind, from the back. You have other types of guards, we are going to see that. So, um, right now, the game is presenting, introducing us to the, uh, the guards in blue suits only. They remain still, remember that. They watch the note before them. You don't, don't walk, don't slide over this note, remember that. So, you can, you can throw different s things to distract. Yeah, to attack them first. So, I think they go to the spot where you throw, where you throw the, uh, stone and then well just move to the um, to move around we are going to see because of course there is not only one type of uh, guard in levels let's play the level 7 here we go so there's a cutscene presenting us uh, the uh, the whole scene before you started all right now there is yep it still is the uh, the warts in blue switch so uh, if you want to a note where a guard can catch you then it's game over remember that if you surprise a guard by moving onto the spot from behind or from the side and then their piece is removed Actually, it's important. Um, the better a guard can see you, you know, from uh, from two spots ago. Okay. For instance, just whether one is about to intercept or be looking in the wrong direction when you make your move, then it's fine. If you are two spaces away, two spaces away, you are you are safe. Okay, just don't to be next to them. Whenever they uh, they are watching into your 
direction or if you they move in your direction so here you have guards in yellow suits they always patrol along one axis and they turn 180 degrees when they can't move forward anymore or when they can't attack so they will attack agent 47 if they move to a node in front of him okay so don't don't be on the uh, on the node just in front of these guards in yellow suits whenever they uh, they slide into a spot so they are guards with knives as well they rotate on the spot and they also strike agent 47 if they align to face him we uh, we don't see that right now but i can talk about this squad so um, your objective is always to finish on a particular node, meaning the end of the level, without being caught or being killed, of course. This node either takes you to the next level or it's containing your target, the person that you have to kill. The levels all start uh, very simple and they become more and more complicated, as you are going to see in the following minutes okay so you have different objectives for each uh, level some of them are incompatible with the other for instance if you want to finish the objective and finish the level under 15 moves then generally you can't finish the, um, the objective uh, take the briefcase because well when you take the briefcase generally you will you will have to move more than 15 uh, 15 notes. We will need more than uh, 50 moves, I mean. So, along with the new guards who have new behaviors and who are introduced progressively in the levels, there are also objects that you have seen that can be thrown into nearby spots, but only one node um, afar, not two, not two nodes, okay? So, these objects, when you throw them, they will encourage the guard to move and disrupt their behavior patterns. They, uh, they will change direction. Especially for them. Okay. So sometimes you just you should make some move to wait as well. Huge. Okay, we complete the level and we collect the, the briefcase. And that means collecting the beef craze means that, uh, well, we can't finish the level under 15 moves. Okay, cutscenes are very nice, really. So, in this level, we uh, have a fern. When you move on to a node, having a fern and its friendly fronts will hi hide you. Yeah, it's kind of just a way to disguise yourself. But you also must always keep moving, so you can't hide in the fern forever. The Agent 47 can never sit on the same spot. He must always pick somewhere to step next. So that fern is only safe for one move. Remember that, that guard, those guards going over the fern. Well, without seeing you, these guys inside, I mean, they only have their back turned for one moment only. go to the next level yeah always nice cutscenes they zoom afterwards and here you go you can rotate a bit the uh, camera I, I don't do that on the time but so uh, avoid this game if you don't like games um, based on trial and error system because you will you will try and you will make errors in this game or if the board game aesthetic doesn't charm you the, the level design, I uh, find that it's built a very smart way. I mean, it's, it's very pleasing to play. However, I would say that the levels, at least for what I have seen so far, and they are only in the first chapter. I'm going. I'm playing the first chapter only in this video. Well, the, the levels are a bit too easy. Once you have got a feel for the basics, um, even the most elaborate of one patterns is not really going to challenge you 
but beside the graphics of Hitman Go are lovely. Animations are slick and I love this look. The audio effects are very nice and the background music simple but uh, effective. I like the way the Ave Maria is playing this game in the background. This song is so adapted to the Hitman actions, you know. It's kind of song that uh, the prepares the, uh, the souls of the guards to, uh, to go to paradise or hell or whatever. So the controls, uh, talking controls, controls can't be easier and more intuitive. You just have to slide in four possible directions on each node at the maximum. So sometimes you can have only two directions. Sometimes, well, one only. No, no. We, well, yeah, if, if you are in a dead end. Okay, yeah, kill the guard in the yellow suit. I'm thinking about where to throw the object. Yeah, I'm going to throw it there. I'm going to go there to wait for this car to go away. The brief case. Yeah, I'm hiding. And then go to the end. Sometimes you just have to wait a bit. If you move too early, the guard will catch you, of course, and that will be game over. The game experience is very satisfying, really. Uh, overall, I would say that uh, Hitman Go is definitely a game you should try if you like puzzle games. This game upholds the tradition that um, the best of the Hitman games have shown. It makes killing a pleasure and fun. Okay, let's go right there. Sometimes we have to be patient. Let's go. Let's wait here and then let's move back to go up to the briefcase and then we are going to go down. The control is really easy, I, I said that already, but you know, you just have to slide. If you hold the, uh, the piece of the HN47 and then swipe, drag, you know, drag and move to the direction that you want pretty straightforward. It's very um, easy to control, really. I don't know if the, in the next chapters um, things, puzzles will be more challenging and we'll put our assassination skills to the test, but in this first chapter, well, I would say that it's, it's, not, uh, it's not tricky at all. The, um, the visuals are very beautiful. The models of guards, for instance, and the different objects. Okay, so uh, I like the, the fact that um, you have different ways of completing each level, either silently or forcefully. So you can decide to uh, kind of uh, to use a, a stealth mode to kill nobody, or you can go the uh, violent mode. You know by killing everybody. And sometimes I think that uh, in some levels, like in this one, that's Im almost impossible to, uh, to finish it uh, without killing anybody. Here we go. Uh, let's remove this blue car. And now we are free to stop the back of Cool. Well, yeah, that's the level 15 of the chapter 1 and the final one. I hope you enjoy watching me play the 15 levels of the chapter 1 to have some first impressions on Hitman Go, a puzzle game published by Square Enix. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel Gameplay 265 to stay tuned for new videos of Hitman Go. Thank you a lot for your support and see you soon on Gameplay 265. Bye bye.